And I can't wait for that first hot fire. We'll, we will distribute video. Uh oh, Bob laughed. Yeah, I did. No, I'm good. We will. I'm good. There you go. I'm going to give you, show you a mission sim. This is not a cartoon. This is a real. This is real physics here. We've been simulating this for a long time. You'll note a couple of things. One thing is when this vehicle, there are payload bays here on the sides, and when this vehicle is in orbit around the moon as a kind of extra mission, a bonus mission, it can launch small satellites into orbit around the moon so that we can do certain kinds of science. You see it happening here. So we're deploying a number of small satellites before we do our landing. You're gonna see the uh, a set of burns that will take us down to the surface. The primary burn is six minutes long. This BE-7 engine will be firing for six minutes. It's a very long burn. The, we verticalize about a kilometer above the surface. You can see that happening now. A very precise landing, again, using those flash LIDARs to detect uh, surface features and using those for navigation. Now we're going to watch as the Davit system, which is inspired by a naval system, deploys a rover. Look at those long shadows. The shadows are always long on the poles of the moon. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting science to be done on the moon, especially on the poles. And we have formed a science advisory board. They're with us here today. Would you guys mind standing up just for one second to be recognized? Give these guys a hand. Thank you. We appreciate it very much. Uh, the wisdom and advice from this group is going to make sure that, that the science gets done right and that we get the most bang for our buck doing that. Thank you. We also have already a bunch of customers for Blue Moon, many of whom are in the audience. They're going to be deploying science missions to the moon as well. People are very excited about this capability to soft land their cargo, their rovers, their science experiments onto the surface of the moon in a precise way. There is no capability to do that today. Let's think about some of the other things we can put on top of this. Here's an, a picture of a pressurized human rover. And it's really interesting, when you can land precisely, you can configure missions that use multiple landings. So you send the rover down first, lower it onto the surface using the Davit system, make sure it's all in good working order, and then send the astronauts. And speaking of sending the astronauts, here's a stretch tank version of what you see behind you. This is the stretch tank version of Blue Moon which can soft land 6.5 metric tons onto the lunar surface. And this has an ascent vehicle on top. I'll tell you one little thing that I think, just a little tiny anecdote. Do you see these landing gear? These pads, the foot pads. When I first saw the drawings of this a long time ago, I was like, my images of landers are all formed by the Apollo lander. And it, I was sure that those Landing pads were too small. And I asked about that. And the answer is these are not too small. The ones on the lunar Apollo lander are too big because we were very worried about how soft the lunar surface was. And it's just an example of how much more we know today. So these will work just fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Vice President Pence just recently said it's the stated policy of this administration and the United States of America to return American astronauts to the moon within the next five years. I love this. It's the right thing to do. And for those of you doing the arithmetic at home, that's 2024. And we can help meet that timeline 
but only because we started three years ago. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. <laughs> and what I'm laying out here today is obviously a multi-generation vision. This is not gonna get done by any one generation. 